In this video, we'll go over dipole antennas. All these antennas here are dipole antennas. Now, this is a 5.8 gigahertz antenna. This is a 5.8 gigahertz antenna. This is a 2.4 gigahertz antenna and this is a 433 megahertz antenna. So what you notice is that as the frequency gets lower, the antennas get bigger. The most common dipole antennas you see are about half wavelength long, consisting of two quarter wavelength sections configured like this. Another common type of dipole is called a sleeve dipole and is constructed with a coax cable with quarter wavelength of the center conductor sticking out and a conductive sleeve soldered to the outer conductor and folded back over the coax. To make this antenna I just took the monopole antenna from the last video and soldered a copper wire onto the outer conductor and trimmed it to about quarter wavelength. So you see at 5.8 gigahertz this antenna has an SWR of about 1.1 which is a pretty good match. The problem with a dipole center fed with a coax cable is that we end up with coupling from the antenna to the feed line that negatively affects our radiation pattern. One way to reduce this coupling is to use a type of ballon called a sleeve ballon, and it's basically just a ferrite bead placed near the feed point of the antenna. Ham radio operators constructing large antennas on the property will often feed dipole antennas with a balanced transmission line called ladder line to further reduce this coupling. This 433 MHz dipole antenna is already a pretty good match, but here you can see by trimming it just a bit, we can improve the SWR from about 1.4 to about 1.3, which only equates to a 1% increase in efficiency. Now let's talk about a topic a lot of people have trouble with, antenna gain. Gain when referring to an antenna does not mean amplification like with an op amp. Antenna gain is a product of the antenna efficiency and the directionality of the antenna. When looking at antenna specifications, the gain is often listed as dBi, and the I is referring to a hypothetical isotropic antenna that has a gain of 0 dBi, which means that it radiates in all directions equally. If not specified, the listed antenna gain is the max gain of the antenna. A good way to visualize antenna gain is with the stick of putty. The maximum size of the stick is dependent on the power of the transmitter and the efficiency of the antenna. The small piece I just cut off represents the power losses. Now let's say we have three antennas with the same efficiency connected to the same 100 watt transmitter but each have different radiation patterns. The volume of putty for each antenna is the same. The first pattern represents a half wavelength dipole and is pretty omnidirectional. The middle antenna radiates most of its energy in two directions and has a higher max gain than the dipole. The antenna on the right has the largest max gain of these three antennas, so it can reach the farthest distance, but only in one direction. If you want to reach longer distances, you'll either have to increase the antenna's efficiency or increase the power of the transmitter. This is how a single dipole radiates when viewed from above. To increase the gain of a dipole, we can place an identical dipole antenna parallel to the first, one half wavelength apart from each other. When powered in phase, we get cancellation in line with the antennas and gain in the direction perpendicular to them. When powered 180 degrees out of phase, we see the opposite occur. When the dipole antennas are not placed one half wavelength apart or the frequency increases, we end up with unwelcome radiation patterns. Hope you guys liked the video and I'll see you next time.